And now, it's time for another edition of the 12th Man Fan Jam. With your host, the Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, Magic Voice. This is the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. And welcome, one and all, to episode 308, the preseason 2015 edition of your 12th Man Fan Jam, the show made up of Seahawk fans from around the world just like you, talking about your Seattle Seahawks. Over the next few moments we share together, we hope that you are entertained and enlightened as we discuss your NFC champion, Seattle Seahawks. So sit back, relax, grab a desired beverage or scent of your choice, and remember, come out healthy and happy. That's the goal. As is the usual with every show, we are not alone, no? I'm joined like I am every episode by the 12th Man Fan Jam Posse, a ragtag group of diehard Seahawk fans from around the world. First, my partner in crime, the ying to my yang. He's never prejudging anyone from married old England. It's Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi, Moses. How are you? Oh, Matt, I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Well, I bring good news and bad. You do? What's the good mm. news? Well, the good news is, according to Harbour, if you drink enough milk, you too could be a quarterback. What's the bad news? That quarterback could be Colin Kaepernick. Yes. On the very stout 49er team. Yes. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> they still have enough players for a team? Not sure. <laughs> Next, from the state of Washington, our very own news hound is 12th Man Editorials can be found on the SeahawkSal.com website. He is our premier news hound. You know him as Shadowhawk. We know him as Will. Hi, Will. Hey, Moses. How are you doing? Wonderful. How are you this evening? Uh, it's been kind of a rough day. I let Alden Smith borrow my car, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> I I smell a theme coming <clears throat> for the show. Sorry about that. Uh, next, from the state of California, and just up the road from the 49er headquarters, where I'm sure he dodged <laughs> cars left and right, our own man behind enemy lines. You know him as Orange 76. We know him as Stats Man Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey, everybody. Yes, uh, I'm right here in enemy territory where Jim Tom Sula could be heard telling Alden Smith, You are not alone. I'm here with you. (laughs) Did we just get a Michael Jackson reference from Mark? (laughs) And it wasn't bad. Oh, man. And it was in a little bit. He did better than any of us could have done. That's awesome. Hey, the kids, the kids love it. Kids, did you hear Michael Jackson? Yeah, it was awesome. Oh, well, wouldn't the kids be scared of Michael Jackson? Oh, well, no, they I should. knew he was going to go there. <laughs> See, now yeah, they you, can't even okay. go to, into a subway anymore. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure that we'll be talking about Alan, Alan Smith later, but that that has to be brought up again. I'm going to put that on a loop and put it on the YouTube channel for you all. Um, yep. <clears throat> finally, back from a brief absence, also from the state of Washington. He's short on stature but tall on Seahawk knowledge. You call him X-ray hawk. We call him Dustin. Welcome back, Dustin. Thank you. It has been too long. I'm glad to have the night off for a change. It's great. It it is great to have you back. It's great to have everyone here. Um, It's an exciting time. The start of the preseason just around the corner. And then, uh, of course, they start counting after that. So we're very excited to talk some Seahawk football. And uh, let's go ahead and get to the show. For those who have listened before, thank you for joining us again. For those who are listening for the first time, don't worry. We promise we will be gentle, but be careful. You may catch poison ivy. The show is run just like a real NFL football game. We have four quarters and even a half time. Our first quarter will be our shadow hawk with the news of the NFL. Uh, following a rant by Mark, the second quarter will have all Seahawk news, including signings and possible holdouts and other news. At halftime, another rousing rendition of the 12th Man Fan Jam halftime trivia game. The Seahawk-based trivia game that you, the listener and viewer, can play along with as well. Can Mark defend his title from last show? Mark, are you ready to defend your title? Ready as I'll ever be. Ready as he'll ever be. This is a very special trivia contest that I know you're all going to love. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, no. Following a break, we have a special um, 
thing tonight on uh, third quarter, Moses, the Reverend Moses, will come out and give his sermon of Seahawk positivity for the preseason. And then following that, he will, I will, Moses will give a top three and then start the fourth quarter. We will talk to Will, who actually went out to training camp and, and talk about his experience at training camp. Before we start, we'd like to remind you to like, share, and subscribe to the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel or contact us on this very thread or on the comment session of this video for feedback or email us at 12manfanjam at gmail.com. Tell us what you think, good or bad. Please join our Facebook group. Uh, a lot of people join our Facebook group. It's growing. It's wonderful. Please join our Facebook group, 12th Man Fan Jam Show. Shout out to Tom Lucas, by the way, who who does a lot on the uh, Facebook group, for sure. Uh, we have a lot of Seahawk discussions and fun there. All of our shows are there. We'll post some outtakes, some other fun stuff. Uh, you Please come over and join the fun. We're on Twitter at Seahawk Positivity. Let us know your thoughts there as well. i like to start the news, but before we start the news, I have a little bit of a shout out to give. Oh, man. Hey, uh, can I do a shout out? Shout out. Shout out. Uh, shout out. Sh- sh- shout out. Yes, it's time for shout outs. And this is a serious shout out before we start the show. And uh, two people who have been on this very show that are friends of the show and friends of all of us. Um, that would be uh, Andy, you know, as Northern Hawk. And uh, Bob, you know, as Predator Hawk. Both have been on the show. Uh, Bob lives here in Indiana. I went and watched the Super Bowl at his house. Andy has slept in my daughter's room. So. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. She, uh, no, he, he came down for a game. She was not there, so don't panic. But uh, anyway, these two guys are very close to me, and uh, they this weekend went to the Hall of Fame where they were inducted in the PFUFA Fans of Fame. So congratulations, gentlemen. Well-deserved. Northern Hawk and Prater Hawk. I couldn't think of two better guys, more deserved. The class of 2015 representing your Seattle Seahawks up in Canton, and they're having an absolute blast. So shout out to those guys. Congratulations, fellas, and I'm sure we'll have you on the show very soon. You can tell us about that experience. All right, let's go ahead and go to the first quarter and news. Yes, news from around the NFL where you were out buying face paint. Here is our 12th man fan jam news hound, Shadowhawk Will, with the news. Will, what you got for us? Well, Moses, uh, despite the uh, flurry of news coming from uh, Seahawks camp this past weekend, uh, Russell Wilson and Bobby Wagner were not the only people who uh, signed extensions. Uh, Another uh, player with a newly minted contract is Lions linebacker DeAndre Levy, third-round pick in uh, 2009, uh, generally considered one of the better uh, outside uh, linebackers in a 4-3 scheme. Hey, Uh, is he... Hey, is he related to Eugene Levy from no. American Pot? Okay. I'm afraid not. That's probably good for him. Go ahead. <clears throat> but anyway, he just signed a, a four-year extension with the Detroit Lions and has some interesting ideas uh, with what he's going to buy with it. You know, you usually hear players, you know, Russell Wilson was talking about time to get a house, players mm-hmm. get stuff for their moms. Levy had a couple of impulse purchases first. Quote, The first thing I'll do probably is get two solid gold dog dishes for my dog, he said. (laughs) That and maybe a 24-hour beard system to just groom me on demand. Other than that, everything will be the same, I think. (laughs) And Google a picture of DeAndre Levy because he's got a beard that uh, ZZ Top would envy. A 24-hour grooming beard system. Man, I don't they, think they have like, something like that unless, like, an assistant walks around with scissors all the time. I don't know how. <laughs> I can't picture that. It's like one of well, those things you got to wear on your head, like when you have while. those braces, you know? I, well, I, I think why. I think if you Google up a uh, beard system, you might get something you don't want to look up. Um, <laughs> but I won't go there. Don't um, go there. Let's not go there. Uh, uh, Mark, a solid gold dog dish. Two of them. What do you think of that? Well, that sounds like protocol for a Detroit Lion player. Oh, you know. <laughs> because, I kind of feel like he's underselling it because he said nothing about the dog's name being engraved on it. He's going cheap. <laughs> cheap. <laughs> Don't you hate people who skimp on their uh, solid gold pet wear? Man, Absolutely. You know, my, uh, my dog was uh, lip it, licking her uh, solid gold behind the other day, and I said, I got to get you a solid gold uh, a dish to get your water. I mean, 
But wouldn't that tam- contaminate the water if it was solid gold? No. Okay. I don't know, but my, my cat read this story, and now she's demanding a solid gold litter box. So. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to hold go, out. She's going to hold out. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 something we learned tonight is is Will's catch is a diva. Absolutely. So, Aunt isn't Oka every is cat a diva? Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, diva. if you're getting a solid gold dog dish for your dog, I think your dog's a diva. But uh, just wow! Imagine, just imagine he walks into the kitchen and puts these gold plates down, and the dog looks at him and goes, "I wanted a new ball. You bought me a bowl. I wanted a yeah. new ball." Like like Veruca Salt, Daddy, I need a new bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I want it now. <laughs> oh my god! Don't care how <laughs> I want it now. This has become like Twelfth Man Fan Jam the musical. Now Will is Bruce awesome. the Thump. Yeah, we um, have a Twelfth Man Fan Jam karaoke Dustin, session. I think. Dustin, no. you can do the Oompa Loompa song. <laughs> I, I absolutely oh. could. I could. Oh. I have a wide variety of songs that I'm. That I'm terrible at singing, so I could definitely do that. <laughs> uh, well, let's save that for another time. Um, yeah. Let's move on from the solid go dog dishes there, Will. What else you got for us? Well, Moses, we will be coming back to uh, the subject of dogs in a second, but uh, first we're uh, taking a trip over to uh, Giants training camp where, like a lot of teams, they're suffering from a fairly common problem. They have a lot of players out with injury. Um, Yesterday, veteran guard Jeff Schwartz, center Weston Richburg, and rookie offensive tackle Eric Flowers. I think he was the ninth overall pick. Um, anyway, he was. They were not practicing less than a full week of training, less than a full week into training camp, and despite having the day off on Tuesday, well, ex Giant Sean O'Hara, uh, now working for NFL Network, was not happy with that, and like a lot of foolish athletes and former athletes, he took to mm-hmm. Twitter. <laughs> Quote, what the hell is going on? Three Giants OL sitting out today, four if you count Will Beatty, after a day off on Tuesday? So much for that toughness. <laughs> then he followed up on that tweet with uh, criticism of Giants general manager Jerry Reese for not having enough depth. Quote, hey Jerry, this guy Kevin Booth is available, former Giant, and he can practice. Hashtag you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> my job for you. So for, first Tiki Barber, now Sean O'Hara. I, I just think former Giants just really need to not comment on their team anymore. I agree. Well, it's that New York attitude. What would we do on this show without Twitter? You know, know. It's, our best stories. <laughs> I, I, I would have material about once every four shows. <laughs> oh, my God. That's too funny. Um the, the, those old giant players are all crotchety New Yorkers. You, know, you kids, get back out there, rub some dirt on it. Come on. Apparently not. No. Apparently not, <laughs> or not. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Mark, did 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 you did you ever uh, did you ever go to your old job and tell people, hey, you're not doing it right? Uh, no, because then they could have smelled the alcohol in my breath, so I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wise choice. Will, what is your final story for this evening? Well, Moses, if you recall, the uh, craze last year was the uh, ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, nice. where uh, people dump buckets of ice water over their heads to try to raise awareness and hopefully some money for uh, AL- to fight ALS. Um, I actually did that myself. Um, I don't know how much good it did for ALS, but it did water the lawn. Um, <laughs> apparently... <laughs> There is a new uh, challenge going around this year that I will not be part of. It's the Dog Biscuit Challenge. (laughs) (laughs) This one is supposed to be in support of the local ASPCA. And while I won't be munching on a milk bone anytime soon, new Bills coach Rex Ryan did on Thursday. At a press conference, Ryan read from a a prepared text when he explained why he was going to snack on a dog biscuit. ASPCA is the second oldest humane society and was founded in 1867. I have four rescue animals, two dogs, two cats. Actually, I have two dogs. My wife has two cats. And this was a special thing when I was challenged, and I was more than happy to do it. There's five calories in these bad boys. Ryan ate a milk uh, dog biscuit, said, oh, this is terrific, then popped a second one into his mouth. (laughs) He then turned to Bill's owner, Terry Pegula, 
and offered him a dog biscuit, which Pagula ate. He then <laughs> challenged uh, defensive tackle Marcel Darius because, quote, he's like a dog on a bone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I know where we're going with that one. <laughs> so, kudos to nope. Rex Ryan and Terry Pagula for uh, raising awareness for the ASPCA by eating by milk eating bones. Yeah. Okay. That whole time, I'm thinking Mel Gibson and Lethal Weapon 3. Eating <laughs> dog biscuits and hanging out with the Rottweiler. Oh, yeah. That's, you guys uh, have never had dog biscuits? No. No, I haven't. I, I do love the bit at the end of Lethal Weapon 3 where he starts smoking again because of, quote, my dog biscuit problem. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I've, no, go ahead, man. Whoa, man. I was going to say, I've, I've, I've eaten, I have actually eaten a dog biscuit. Uh, uh, I knew it! It's always the quiet but ones. They, but they taste like feet. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably why Rex Ryan enjoyed it so much and kept eating it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I was waiting for that. Yay! <laughs> there we uh, go. Just, I'm done. Just like going in a horror, uh, just like going in a haunted house. Oh, no. Um, no, 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 no. We're not <laughs> going there again. I, I have eaten a a cat treat before. Those little, I don't know what they were. Little like little mini cat treats that you're supposed to treat cats. Like cats do tricks and you give them treats. I don't know where that came from, but anyway, there was this little Halloween. Oh. <laughs> 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 there was this little canister, and I think they were called Pounce. You remember Pounce, the little treats? I don't know if they still have them, because I, I, I hate they cats do. now, I guess. But anyway, I'm pretty sure no, they do, yeah. I don't hate cats. Let me take that back. Um, anyway, I was sitting there one time, and my friend had a cat, and it, Pounce was sitting there, and I just opened it up, and I looked at it, and I looked, hmm, and I just threw it in my mouth, and I'm still tasting that thing. Let me tell you. <laughs> it had it just like had an aftertaste. It just like, you know, it's like you swallow it, and it'd be fine. But it just like it's almost like it slid down my throat and left every bit of it all the way down the back of my throat, and two gallons of two gallons of water couldn't get that out. It was disgusting. See, now, Somebody should have food. cut him off. Somebody the, should have cut him off during that story at some point. That was getting yeah. pretty. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh pretty man. Cool. Sorry. <laughs> you know the the dry food. Yeah, it's unpleasant, but it's not too bad. I think to make it a real challenge, it, it should be wet dog food. <laughs> oh, 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 look, gravy train. Or like that canned cat food, the Sheba whatever stuff. Oh, yeah, the stuff that's supposedly good enough for people to eat. Yeah. yeah. The Alpo guys, Challenge. The Alpo Challenge. Does anybody <laughs> remember the TV show Good Times, right? When they lived in the ghetto, and there was this old lady that they thought was using, like, dog meat for, for meat, and she brought over a... She brought over a, a, a meatloaf for him, and nobody would eat it because they thought it was dog food. <laughs> nice. That was awesome. Um, well, uh, thanks, Will. Those are some great stories tonight, especially <laughs> the, the dog food story. Um, I, I'm surprised you, you kind of glossed over the recent happenings today of uh, Mr. Alden Smith. I thought maybe before we go to the end of the first quarter, we could kind of touch briefly on the fact that Alden Smith was arrested uh, today at <laughs> the recording with – <laughs> DUI, reckless driving. Uh, what am I missing? Oh, uh, vandalism. Vandalism. Yes. Yeah. Who had August seventh in the Alden Smith arrest? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't well, think it would take this long. I lost some money. Uh, well, let's ask Zorny. Zorny, you're in the enemy territory. What, what's the reaction down in Santa Clara? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just I've seen a few. I've seen the same clips. I think that everybody else has, but it's just. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just one more thing for this team. I, I think their 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 win total, their over under, and their win total must have dropped a game or two in Vegas. You know, I'm sure it did. Right. I'm sure it did. And, and I, you know, I, I don't want to dwell too much on it, but I, I do want to say this, and I said this on Facebook, and I, I stand by this. I, I, there are great fans of every team. You know, there are, are are real fans of teams that have been through thick and thin, like like all of us here. We remember what six and ten was like. We remember what eight and eight was like. You know, and Everybody has those true fans, and the true fans of any team do not deserve what's going on in San Francisco right now with all the retirements and the people leaving, and then this this guy doing what he's doing. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't – I just feel – I feel bad for the real fans of any team that have to go through this. Well, and, and hell, Moses, I mean, they're, they can't even practice on their field. The grass is coming mm -hmm. up. I mean, it's like yeah. that one poster on uh, – <clears throat> 
Seahawks.net put it. I mean, the 49ers are so bad this year, even the grass won't root for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> it's just I feel, it's just one thing after another. You get to the point where you don't even want to poke fun at them much. No. It's, it's getting to be pathetic. But, you know, they don't – the real fans of any team don't deserve a bonehead like this guy doing what he did. I mean, on top of everything else, now this happens. and Yeah, but Dennis, it's not going to be a surprise to them, surely. No, no, so no. When, it's when not. you say they don't, when you say you don't deserve it, I mean the fact is, is they should have got rid of him what four times ago after the well, yeah. Or but I mean the <laughs> fans, I just the fans personally, you know, they see that they can't, they can't hire to fire people. They they have their team and it's no. their team. And they have to love who they who's on there. And then you know this just I just look at this and I go after all everything that's happened to them. They had a coach that that brought them, you know, maybe you know one of the best winning eras of their time and you know he's let go and this, there's a, a cloud of uncertainty on how you know how mutual that was and that you know he was getting kicked out or whatever then you have all those retirements then you have you know free agents leaving and then you have this happen and i just as a fan that you can't hire and fire players a real fan of this team that's been there when they were four and twelve who's you know been through the montana years but also been through you know the 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 elvis gerback years um, it just, I, f- I feel for him a little bit, I think. But. I guess. I mean, I don't, I had a lot of respect for a lot of those players. Patrick Willis was a hell of a player. Yes. Cowboys, hell of a player. Alden's a hell of a player, but he just, you know, his head's yeah. not right. No. And it's a little easier now, I think, to have a little bit of empathy with those guys because of what you're talking about. Just because Harbaugh's gone, I load that guy. He was, he just fucked the hell out of me. Agreed. And the, the culture that he was promoting and the, like he was there whenever uh, their I think it was their offensive coordinator when they beat us on Christmas Eve the one year. Their coaches are running through the building yelling "Happy Cr- or Merry Christmas." Yep. But it made it easy to hate them. Now that yes. they're gone, it's Agreed. like you know it, I agree with you. Kind of it sucks for those guys. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, go ahead. It's it's a shame though. Talking about I mean our. This rivalry has fallen so far so fast, and you know, mm-hmm. with Harbaugh leaving, and then just everything imaginable happening to this mm-hmm. team this year, and you know, I'm just honestly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss getting up for the 49ers games every year. I mean, it's just like, oh, the Niners are in town, we gotta give it our all, and it's, it's never gonna be the same. No, it's not. It's really mm-hmm. not. And and uh, before we go to the end of the news section, I, I did get actual audio of um, Alden Smith's agent talking to all oh, and, oh, here we and go. so this is alden smith agent talking to alden smith after he he got out of jail and he got home and 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 the agent was waiting for him at the door and this is what the agent said stupid you're so stupid so, so. <laughs> see i i was surprised moses i thought you'd have the clip from liar liar where he's going well, stop breaking the law yeah. asshole <laughs> yeah I was gonna do that. <laughs> but i like this better but yes, I, I saw that one too. That was good. Moses, did almost, you see, did, sorry, did you see the Tom Sula clip when he was, did the announcement to the press? No. It was really. Um, he did a really good, nice speech. He did a really good, um, sort of inspirational. If you're out there and you need help, you've got to go and get it. You must go and get it. Good. But it sort of started to turn into a Shia LaBeouf motivation um, <laughs> piece at one point. Uh, do it. He was a, do he it. was a little bit. Yeah, it did exactly go a bit like that. So if you yeah, if you, if you do want to check that out, have a look at that. That's quite good as well. <laughs> Put that with Shia LaBeouf. Do it! Just do it! Well, we're going to do it right now. This is the end of the first quarter. It's the end of the first quarter, bitches. Well, thank you so much for the news, as always. Top notch. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back to the second quarter. And when we do, we will talk about the Seahawks. You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam. On the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Well. And now it's time for a 12th man fan jam 60 second rant. You know you make me wanna. Rant, 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 rant. I don't want to get off on a rant here. Hello everyone. This is Statsman Mark with another Seahawks rant. Covering all things Seahawks, and first and foremost, we have Russell Wilson and Bobby Wagner signing, and um, these are two guys that we absolutely need. Uh, That goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. And both signed to um, 
you know, big money, but reasonable deals, and they definitely reflect the value of the team. Um, I also was impressed uh, with Coach B. Carroll and him getting the team to move forward. Um, last year ended uh, in very tough fashion, naturally. But, you know, if, if there's any coach that can keep it positive and keep these guys uh, focusing on 2015, it's Pete. And the Seahawks are going to be right there again. Uh, it's a, a third straight Super Bowl appearance would be unprecedented, uh, or it hasn't been done since Buffalo in the early 90s. But if any team can do it, uh, it's this team. And they have that kind of collective focus and mental toughness. And... Um, it would be a, a, a huge achievement, and I personally would be delighted since the Super Bowl is going to be held 15 minutes away. So go Seahawks, and uh, I hope to see them up the street next February. Holy shit, it's the second quarter. Welcome back to the second quarter of your 12th Man Fan Jam Show. We want to remind you real quick, don't forget to join our 12th Man Fan Jam Show uh, Facebook page. You can email us at 12 manfanjam at gmail.com, Twitter at Seahawk Positivity. Join in on the fun, folks. This is not just about us. This is about all of us. And uh, we're just uh, four or five schleps on it with a microphone talking on a YouTube channel. So we're no different than you guys. Come in and let us know what you think as well. Uh, this quarter, we're going to talk a little bit about the Seahawk news that's happened over the last couple of weeks. And there is no bigger news to start with, I think, than our long national nightmare is finally over after... Supposed Seahawk fans were calling him selfish and greedy, and all this speculation came out from the media. He's going to sign. He's not going to sign. He's going to hold out. They're not going to get it done. He's going to get it done, blah, 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 blah. Finally, right before training camp, a huge extension for Russell Wilson. Mark, what were your thoughts on the contract? Well, I'll admit, I was the one. I, I was someone stressing a tad bit just because I did not want to see this drag into the regular season or have it shelved until next year for sure um i figured he would stay but you know um hey it's a, it's a it's a good deal it's a fair deal um i texted you like you mentioned a moment ago that you know it you know uh you knew we'd get it done and, and i figured we would but um you know it's 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 right there it's top money and um it's just it's a huge relief that they can do this now before the regular season and you know, it gives everybody peace of mind collectively. And now he can just yeah. focus on football. I think he would anyway. He's not the type of guy that would be on the field scrambling and worrying about his contract. But it's just nice that it that it got done and it and it's and it's a and it's a fair deal and it does reflect his, his value to the to the team and, and to the franchise as a whole. Um I just like to add the only person that wants to see Russell Wilson dragging right now is Sierra. <laughs> but um <laughs> God, I can't believe I just said that. I am so going to hell. Dustin, what were your thoughts on the contract? Uh, initially, when I heard it, uh, it sounded like the average was over $21 million a year. I was a little disappointed because he's always preaching team guy, team guy, go Hawks, all that stuff. And you're like, man, that kind of hamstrings the team a little bit. But then uh, once you go in and you actually look at the contract and see what the cap hit is per year, pretty smart. I mean, the first year it's only seven million. Uh, next two years, eighteen million. It's not bad for a starting quarterback. It still gives you the leeway to do some things. Um, third year or fourth year, it's twenty-one million. Um, I never thought he was going to be anywhere else. I was just worried about what it would mean for keeping other guys around. And he's getting his money, but it's done in a format that allows the team to keep the core players together and. It's a beautiful thing, man. It's a, uh, uh, I I really like how it turned out overall. Yeah, I liked it too. Um, Matt, what were your thoughts? Um, well, it was quite strange. I didn't realize um, that it had been signed. I saw it from Will's Facebook page post, which was like, I think it was Will's. It was like, like, holy crap! It's it's, Wait it's a happened. Minute. Wait a minute, you're friends with Will on Facebook? Why? Yeah. Will, you bastard! I've tried three times to be your friend. You are. Oh, that's right. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I think it's the right. <laughs> was it? Was that your Facebook post? What have I? Have I just? Have I just attributed that wrongly? No, anyway. no, no. Uh, no, no. That was that was mine. Yeah, was and fun. I was, and and I thought, well, I I originally thought it was like a joke. <laughs> I thought, oh no, it's, it's probably just like you know, 
not not really. It's another one of those anonymous sources has said that it's going to be this. Um, but no, it was a genuine thing, and I was over the moon. I mean, I think it's a good deal, as as Dustin said. I think it's quite fair. Um, I like the fact that there's a little bit of talk now about him taking less money again. He's the saint. Saint Wilson comes back again that he took a little less money to help with with other with other signings. Um, but the main thing is, is we haven't got to listen to the media go on and on and on about you know will he mm-hmm. won't he what it will be anymore. That's that's dead now. That's dead. Yeah. We don't have to have that anymore. Uh, which is which is a great thing. But no, I think it's you know it's good for the team. It keeps everything together. I I agree. Will your thoughts? Well, Dustin mentioned that uh, cap-wise, it's really not uh, going to be that much of a burden for us. And that was really the reason why it was so important to get it done this year so you could spread part of the signing bonus, part of that money over this contract year and uh, spread out the hit a little bit. If we had gone, uh, if he had played out his contract and um, we negotiated a deal next year, you know, the cap hit probably would have been over 20 million each year because he didn't have that one year with a really low base salary. So, right. you know, they, they took it down to the wire, but kudos to both sides for getting something done when it really counted. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, you know, personally, like Mark kind of already shared, I really didn't have any fear. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't thinking, Oh gee, I hope that, you know, Oh gee, I hope they have enough cap for this, this, and this. I, I, you know, if we had to, and, I, and we don't have to, but I had already decided in my head if 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 it meant not sacrificing everything, but it, it, this guy needs to be on our team. I'm sorry, and other guys are are yes, very important. But this you franchise quarterbacks, like we've said many times on here, they do not come every year, even five years or every ten years. This guy is unique, and I my my view at the whole time was I don't care what the cost is, get this guy in, period. <laughs> I don't care what it's going to cost us. Because, you know, I, as great as Wagner is, we'll talk about him in a minute, as great as all the other players are, a franchise quarterback comes around once every couple of decades, and this kid has got it the complete package. And so You and I John was, Hammond with it, spare no expense. Yeah, I was. I was like, I don't, well, I just already got signed. I didn't even care what the deal was. I just, good, he's signed, let's go. And... Um, but just thrilled to death that he's going to be, and I never had, like Mark said, I really had no doubt. I, 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 Carolyn Schneider have done a phenomenal job. That's an understatement. Can't underestimate these guys and what great job they've done. And so I just knew they could find a way. If anybody find a way, be these guys. So after that, Wagner got a little bitter on Twitter, said something about can't sign everybody. And I thought, oh, here we go. And threw a little gasoline on the fire. But then next one, then guess what, Will? We re-signed Wagner too. Well, I tell you, Moses, I woke up uh, last Friday thinking, well, okay, at least we'll get a done with, deal done with Wagner really quick. And then, of course, oh, we signed Wilson. Woohoo! Oh, wait, that's <laughs> going to make it hard to get Wagner. Oh, Saturday night rolls around. Wait, what? We signed him too? And, <clears throat> yeah, it's just the Wagner signing really floored me because I didn't think that we'd be able to get something worked out, at least not that quickly. And they had to get a little bit creative, and, you know, they did have to say goodbye to Tony McDaniel to get some cap room carved out, and that's unfortunate. But, you know, Wagner really is the the quarterback of our defense, and to get him locked up at a deal that, okay, yeah, Luke Keekley's going to get a bigger deal in a year or so, but I'd take Wagner any day of the week. And it's an important part of our defense. We had to get it done, and they managed to get it done the same weekend that they got Wilson done. I mean, all the yeah. all the worry, all the speculation, and they got the two biggest deals done in one weekend. Well, and, and real quick, I want to add before I ask Dustin about the Wagner deal. I, you know, living 20 minutes away from from Lucas Oil Stadium over here in Indiana, I, I, I really haven't been watching much sports, but I don't, I haven't heard anybody say anything about Andrew Luck as far as a contract or anything. I don't know what's going Oops. on in Indy. Andrew, yeah, that other guy. I don't know. So I don't. I'm, you know, will he get paid more than you know? Will he get paid more than Wilson now? I don't really care. We got our guy. You get your guy, and we're all happy. I don't really care. But I haven't heard anything over here. I know Russell's contract has been a big key of discussion in Seattle for the last couple months. Over here, I haven't heard anything about Andrew Luck and his contract, which is very bizarre. But anyway. It, I think it's because they're waiting for Russell to get done. Probably. That might be. Yeah, yeah um, probably. Dustin, Dustin Wagner, um, your thoughts on the contract? 
Well, it was kind of funny. We were, um, I had some buddies over on Saturday night, um, Jeff Queen and Steve Merritt, and then uh, some of you guys know them, and then um, uh, Glenn German. And we're we're all Seahawks buddies, still get together, whatever. And uh, they came over for UFC. We're watching Ronda Rousey fight. And uh, <laughs> so we're checking Twitter the whole time because we're waiting to see what's going on with the Hawks. We're just waiting for that Wagner deal to uh, to break. And then sure enough, before Ronda fights, we hear the Wagner deal. We're like, sweet. We've been waiting for that. I kind of anticipated it would be done Monday. But because uh, John Clayton had been reporting all week that as soon as Russell's done, Wagner's going to happen soon. So we're just kind of had our eyes open waiting for it, right? And then I see uh, – I, I check Twitter to see what's going on. I see – and the, I don't know if you guys watch pay-per-view, but no. it, it was kind of a long pay-per-view. There was a lot of fights before Ronda Rousey fought, fought. And so after that broke, we're sitting there watching, checking Twitter, and like and the Seahawks have signed two more people before this fight starts. Just <laughs> <laughs> making jokes. <laughs> but – you. It just added to the the feel good feeling uh, of the night, so sure. it it was pretty awesome. It it really sure. helped make the night. And then Ronda knocking uh, Correa or Cohea out was yeah icing on the cake. It sure was, hey, Matt. Hey Moses, oh. sorry, yeah. r- really quick, no. something I forgot to mention when we were talking about uh, Wilson. Apparently, the morning that we uh, he signed his extension. Uh, yes, according, well, according to a caller. Uh, who uh, called into 710, uh, the, the sports radio station, they actually announced it on the Bainbridge Island Ferry. Uh, uh, that's crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> I came into work Friday morning, and um, I, I get to work at like 6.30. As soon as I walk in, we always have the TV on in the, in the middle of my department. And I see I'm talking about as soon as I walk in, go to sit in my bag, and I'm like, Russell Wilson signs his contract. It's like, all right, guys, I'm not working for like a while here. <laughs> <laughs> Watching the screen. Yeah, yeah I was not awesome. terribly productive either. So, uh, Matt, were you terribly productive when you heard about Wagner? Uh, yeah, I was actually. Um, I was trying to work out again whether it was a fake or for, you know, another invisible sure. source that was that sure. was that was saying that saying the rumors. But no, I, mean, I was really pleased when I when I looked at it because I obviously I assumed that they'd obviously already done quite a lot of work with his contract anyway, whilst they were also waiting for sort of, you know, the whole Russell Wilson thing to pan out. Um, so I didn't think they would be very far off, a bit like Dustin. I wasn't, I was pretty sure we would get it done, but I didn't know how far away it was going to be. Um, but again, I was really pleased that they were able to get it done that quickly, especially after his tweet. His tweet did worry me. And again, it goes yeah. back to the whole thing about whether, whether footballers and whether, but should you be on Twitter? This is the, this is yep. the moment. Should you be on Twitter? Think before um, you tweet. Yeah. I think, it was, I think he essentially had a fan's reaction to that contract. Because a lot of fans saw that and they're like, "Oh man, that much money! It's terrible. He's overpaid. We're mm-hmm. not going to be able to afford everybody." But then you see the structure of it, and you're like, "Yeah, it's fine." I think Wagner well, kind of had a, a fan reaction almost to it. Yeah, but but the thing is, is I don't know. I was sort of looking at it, and at one point I thought, "Well, is he actually sort of almost saying that to Tony McDaniel? Is he sort of saying that to the others on the team? Did he know at that point that he was going to be signed?" Maybe he. So did. actually, it's a case of saying, actually, you know, guys, you can't give everyone, and and I, I don't know, it was a strange tweet to put out anyway. But in any case, it it's done. A Forty-three million deal, um, amazing, very, very, yeah. very, very good, very good for C- for the C- uh, Seattle Seahawks. Yep, Matt, uh, Mark, happy. Yeah, you know, it, of course, it's great news, and the thing with Wagner that's interesting is like his whole contract process has been like very stealth. I mean, this one yes. just seemed yeah. like way under the radar and of course the media is not going to touch on it even though he's a pro bowler um there wasn't too much noise about it but i i was surprised given you know his tweet which may or may not have been kind of just you know tongue-in-cheek i don't know but yeah i mean it's great that they they've, that that they locked him up and, and, and gave him a good deal and and for dustin's sake i'm glad it happened because that ronda rousey fight lasted all of what 34 seconds <laughs> <laughs> yeah which is great true. I love Rhonda. <laughs> How true. How could you not? Um, that that means basically through 2017, the Seahawks have Wilson, Lynch, Graham, Bennett, Averill, Wright, Thomas, Sherman, um, all locked up. And one more guy on that list, unfortunately, um, Dustin, that's Cam. But uh, what's the latest on the holdout and what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on that is that he's made his point. I mean, mm-hmm. 
He wants more money. He hasn't shown up. And the Seahawks are not doing anything this year, just like Michael Bennett. Uh, if he would have um, done it earlier in the offseason like Bennett did, there would have been that stalemate way earlier. And then training camp, he'd have been here like Bennett. He's just he's making a point now. Him and uh, Bennett next year, they're going to renegotiate. They're going to have something done next year. Right now, I think it's just all about making a point. He's yeah. going to come to camp. He's going to be here probably – by week three of the preseason, I don't know that he'll play in the game, but he'll probably be here. And then they'll waive all the thirty thousand dollars for every day and the yeah. the bonus that they're able to eat into. That'll all be waived. Um, the next year they'll renegotiate. Cam will have a new deal. I think three years out is just too long mm-hmm. to try and do something with. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Two years they've shown that they'll do that with. They did with Marshawn. So it's it, it's a good as you say it's a good signal of intent because it tells the organization quite clearly that both of those players are not happy with what's currently yeah. happening. I don't think either of them have any expectation of getting anything. They know what the Seahawks have already said about doing those mm-hmm. sorts of deals that far out. They know it's yeah. not going to happen, but they're just making it absolutely pointed clear to the front office that you need to make sure that we're in that in that discussion next year. Yeah. Um I think yeah. I don't I don't think Cam will hold out into the regular season. I think he will hold out until the third week of preseason, exactly what Dustin has said, and I expect him to do that. I'm quite happy for him to do that, really. Um, I, I expect all the fines to be waived, and then I expect us to have a great season, and then next year to get those two sorted out. Yeah, I'm right with it. I think it's more positioning than anything yeah, else. Like, absolutely. hey, I'm serious about this, so next year we got to talk. That's kind of yeah. what I think they're doing. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Will, we're kind of used to holdouts at camp, and, and I <laughs> see it all the time. You know, this famous player is holding out at their camp. I, I have yet to see that be a problem come playtime. Uh, of course, we can all remember when, you know, it was a yearly event that Walter Jones held out, went down to Alabama yeah. and pushed Escalades around a parking lot and came back probably stronger than he would have if he went to camp. It's, it's a little different. Training camp isn't what it was 30 years ago. 30 years ago, these guys went to training camp to get in shape. You don't do that anymore. And let's face it, camp plays a punishing position. He plays a position that, you know, he has a lot of hits. It would not hurt him to miss training camp, would it, Will? Well, um, there is the possibility just because, yeah, I'm sure he's staying in shape, but there's in shape and then there's actual in-camp practice working out shape. So I I think there is a greater uh, possibility of, you know, something like a hamstring or a groin or whatnot. But mm -hmm. I just I just hope you guys are right, because, you know, like like I wrote about this week, you know, Carroll has let his players uh, express themselves and be who they are. But his one rule is don't hurt the team. Right. And if if and I don't think it's going to happen, it's 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 kind of like the Wilson situation where okay you know this is going to work out but until it is worked out it's kind of a little unnerving you know if he did hold out into the regular season it would hurt the team you know if if the Seahawks did make an exception for him which really would open the floodgates with all these other players that would hurt the team and I I think he'll be back and I think it'll be fine it's just I I gotta admit I'm disappointed. This is yeah. the last guy I would expect who would do something like this. Yeah. And the team made, gave him a pretty good contract two years ago, and it yes. hasn't really been eclipsed since then. Well, it depends on how you look at it, because uh, as a strong safety, it has not. But as a safety in general, he's kind of middle of the board, so that might be what he's looking at. But I think, to be uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I think Will kind of hit on something there with the injury situation. He tore his ligaments in his knee or partial t- tear anyways, that week of practice before the Super Bowl. You kind of wonder how much of this is a veteran move in two aspects, the one me and Will mm-hmm. or me and uh, Matt were talking about as far as setting up for negotiations next year, mm-hmm. and then just taking pressure off his knee this year. A lot of vets try and find ways to duck training camp. This might be his way of doing it to try and give his knee a couple extra weeks before he Could jumps be. in there. Could very well be. Could very well be. Mark, your thoughts on Cam? Yeah, I pretty much uh, echo what, you know, what Will and, mm-hmm. and now Dustin just touched on. And that is that, you know, there's being in shape, you know, for, for the for the regular Joe. And then there's, you know, there's being a professional, uh, you know, football player and being in football shape and being but, in training camp. So you just hope that, 
you know, I, I think this isn't, you know, I agree it's a move where he's probably trying to, you know, miss a little time and hopefully it doesn't cost him in terms of tweaking himself, you know, before the season starts or early in the season. And my thing would be, yeah, I mean, when he signed his contract, was it, a, was it, you know, above average or was it, you know, however high at the time? And then, you know, if it's two years later and now it's, it's uh, dropped compared to other safeties, then, you know, it's all relative at the time. He, he must have, you know, uh, you know, he must have liked it because he signed it. So right, now it's right. two years later, and of course you get eclipsed. So, you know, hopefully it works out where they they work out something long term next year uh, for him, and I guess for Bennett. You know, depending on what kind of cap room, uh, you know, that we have. General yeah, consensus seen... when he signed that deal though was that Seattle was had overpaid. Right. I mean, uh, Chancellor. Yeah, he was the hard hitting in the box safety, but he was still. He was not as good in coverage the uh, first couple of years as he's become since then. And he is he, he is a lot better player today than he was two years ago. Absolutely. I get that. But the team gave him a, a really good deal when they didn't have to. And they made a commitment to him when they didn't have to. And that, I think that's where my disappointment's coming. But there's, you know, I think the, to, the, the go, worry for go Cam is that he's going to... The worry for Cam is that he's going to get injured, I think, and not get the money that he wants to have early in this contract. So he wants it brought as much forward as possible, I think, is, is what he's getting at. But mm-hmm. I think you're right. I think you're right, Will. I, don't, I just don't think he has the leverage right now to do it, but he has the ability to at least take some weight off that knee, but at the same time make a very strong point to the front office. Yeah, to uh, touch on actually both those guys' points a little bit, um, Cam signed a deal where people perceived him as overpaid. However, Cam's a strong safety. If you go back and you look, he's the highest paid strong safety in the league still to this day. Safeties in general, free safeties, make more money. Earl Thomas's position. So Cam is underpaid for a safety because he's middle of the group, but he's still, for his position, strong safety, highest paid in the league. That's kind of a uh, – got to find that middle ground there. So it's kind well, of – go ahead. Well, I was going to say that's that's kind of how it works, though. I mean, you know, you look at linebackers. Inside linebackers are generally paid less than outside linebackers. Tight ends are paid less than uh, wide receivers. Strong safety. It's just kind of the nature of the beast that strong safeties will be paid a little less. Yeah, but again, to touch on, uh, I only got halfway there, to touch on Matt's point about the injuries, the way Cam plays, his, he's not going to have a long career. <laughs> he hits people hard and often. So I can see where even though he's a strong safety, and he's paid a little less, I can see where he'd want that financial safety early on because of the way he plays the game. So it's kind of a catch-22 almost in a way. Yeah, and I understand where he's coming from. I just think he's going about it the wrong way. Yeah. All right. Hey, playing a game. I'm. You brought that up because it's time for us to play a little game called Caption That Picture. Yes, capture that picture game where we take a picture from ripped from the media, the headlines, and everywhere. This was ripped from SeattlePI.com. Picture that you see is from training camp. It is an adorable picture of our tight end Jimmy Graham with his arm around Russell Wilson. It's a Aww. very adorable picture. So we are going to caption that picture. Um, uh, Matt, are you ready to caption that picture? I've got two captions, yep. You've got two. Okay, Matt, caption that picture. I should call him Squishy, and he shall be mine, and he shall be my Squishy. Come on, Squishy, come on. (laughs) (laughs) And your (laughs) other one, Matt, caption that picture. Russell Wilson, hey, 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 no touching till we're married. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. (laughs) Mark, do you have a caption for that picture? I do, I got one. All right, Mark, caption that picture. The caption is, if you can't beat a team several years in a row in the playoffs, then join them. Oh, oh. Nice. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Will, you have, have a caption? Two. You have two. Will, caption that picture. Don't worry, Russ. We'll get that Brady kid this year. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll caption that picture. 
And we're the two best friends that anybody could have. We're the two best <laughs> friends that anybody could have. We're the two best friends that anybody could have. Oh my God! Everyone ever, is singing ever, tonight. Ever, ever, ever leave each other. Okay, that okay. Will and we got Will singing. We got Mark singing. We gotta get. We have to do the rest of us in here. Um. All right. Um. Mark, we already did Mark. It's Dustin's turn, right? Yeah. Dustin, do you have a caption for that picture? No, um, I have a couple. Okay, good. Hey, right, hey, so, hey, uh, hey, Dustin. Sir. Ca- caption that picture. All right. Um, so this is our first pick from the Seahawks annual Bring Your Son to Work Day at the VMAX. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, Dustin, caption that picture. Jimmy Graham showing that he's already being active in the community, bringing his uh, little brother to the program from the big br- – or being – a little uh, – one more time. One more time. Hey, sorry. hey, Dustin. Catch yeah. in that picture. Jimmy Graham showing he's already active in the community by volunteering for the Big Brother program and bringing his little brother to the VMAC for practice. Mm-hmm. Well – I didn't – Go ahead. I was just saying I didn't deliver either either of those very well, but sorry. Well, you know, guys, as usual, you guys had some wonderful captions, and now it's time for me to go straight to hell. So, uh oh, I have two. God help me. All right. Is this another Nickelodeon moment? No. no, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Caption that picture. The first one. Um, it's uh, it's um, Graham speaking. Oh my God! You're even cuter in person without your helmet. Come here, let me rub that hair. <laughs> and the one I'm going to hell for. <clears throat> uh oh. Caption that picture is also Graham speaking, and he says, "So, bro, Ashton, she's not taken then." Oh God. <laughs> oh. I went there. Yikes. I went there because you know think- it's a bro code. I think Jimmy Graham looks like a, a cop checking a Keebler elf for a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Well, and on that note, we'll get ready for halftime. Holy sh! It's halftime. All right. It is time to get ready for 12th Man Fan Jam Halftime Trivia, a game where you, the watcher, the viewer, you can play along. Mark's going to try to take on all of the rest of the posse this evening and reclaim his championship. And we will come right back after this station identification and play that game. Hey, this is Matt all the way from Merry Old England and you're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam. Yes, it's halftime, and welcome to another fun-filled edition of the best play-along Seahawk theme trivia game show on the internet. It's time for 12th Man Fan Jam Halftime Trivia with your host, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, me, and welcome to another wonderful, rousing rendition of 12th Man Fan Jam Halftime Trivia, the trivia game where we have trivia questions about the Seahawks, and you can play along by watching your screen as we put the questions up while the posse challenges each other in a fight for the finish. And our posse tonight, of course, is Matt and Dustin and Will, and of course, our returning champ, Mark. Mark, are you ready to defend your championship against these contestants? Ready is Rex Ryan with a milk bone. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, tastes like feet. Okay, so here's how the trivia game works. There will be two rounds of questions. Each contestant answers one question each round. If they get it correct, they get one point. After two rounds of questions, there will be a final trivia question worth two points. If there's a tie after that, then the tied players go on to a special secret overtime question where the winner becomes reigning 12th man fan jam trivia champion and gets to have a special 60 second rant between the first and second quarter of the very next episode of the 12th man fan jam show. 
As an added bonus to those listeners on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel, the questions and possible answers will be displayed on your screen, so you, the viewer and listener, can play along as well if you wish. If you'd like to play along, please let us know how you did on the questions. Remember, there's no Googling, no phone a friend, and please, no wagering. However, there is a lifeline for each of the contestants. Before the taping of this show, my two charming Seahawk fan children, Mosette and Little Mo, did take this quiz. And if the contestants want to know what the kids said, they may ask that only once during the entire game show and only during the first two rounds. Now let's get ready to play 12th Man Fan Jam Trivia. Round <laughs> one's topic. Round one's topic is Wilson. We're going to feature Wilson and Wagner tonight because they re-signed contracts. So it's kind of a Wilson and Wagner celebration. So the first round's topic is Wilson. So our champ is uh, Mark. He gets to choose first. One through four, Mark. In the spirit of Wilson, I'll take three. Okay. Um, Will Matt, one, two, or four? Uh, Two, please. Okay. Um... Will, one or four? I'll take one. Okay, that will leave Dustin with four. I want to remind you, uh, once per game, you can ask for the kids. They did take the test. Um, and I will tell you uh, what their answers were if you want to use that or not. That's totally up to you. Uh, will is question one. The topic is Wilson. Will, are you ready? Hit me. All right. I'll do that later when no one's wa- watching. Number one is this. While taking a break from their band Heart in the 1990s, the Wilson sisters <laughs> created a new group. What was the name of that group? Was it the Bad Animals, the Love Mongers, or Evermore? Hey, Will! Got some organ for you, buddy. What were the choices Yikes. again? I'm sorry. The name of the groups. The Bad Animals, the Love Mongers, or Evermore? Wilson nope. sisters. From no Seattle. Clue. Yeah, no clue, so I'm going to go with Love Mongers. Okay. He goes, <laughs> no clue, so he goes with Love Mongers. The two kids went with that's, Evermore. That's my usual approach. Going with Love Mongers is always a good approach. The uh, the two kids went with Evermore. But you're right. It's Love Mongers. Woo-hoo. And Will is on the board in the first round. All right, Matt. Yeah. Topic, is, topic is Wilson. Are you ready? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn. <laughs> All right, you might. I don't know. Are you a film buff uh-uh. by chance? You watch a lot of. Am I a what? A film buff? <laughs> Not really. Okay. Well, <clears throat> what? there's this guy named Tom Hanks. Are you familiar with him? Oh dear. I, I, oh, a come little on, bit. Man. Yeah. No, no, bit. no, no, wait. No. Oh, no. Be, hey, you hey, don't hey, think hey, it's hey, going to be that hey, easy, do you? I will pull this trivia question show over. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And drive straight home. Here's the question. Uh, yeah. What what Wilson is married to Tom Hanks? Is it Rita Wilson, Annette Wilson, or Roberta Wilson? Rita Wilson, Annette Bil- Wilson, or Roberta Wilson? What Wilson is married to Tom Hanks? She's been married it's to him for Rita a long Wilson. time. Oh, he says it's Lita. Uh, Mosette also said Lita. Little Mo said Rita. Roberta. Rita, yeah. And you're right. It's Rita Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't so bad. See? That was fine. That's easy, that, that one. That was, that was, that was kind of good. Okay. Mark, number three, are you ready? Yes, sir. And, of course, if you're just joining us, Mark has no organ. So we move on. Mark, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> your, your question is about just barely. Ray. Yeah, just barely. Your question is about Ray and Wilson. You know, played Dwight Schrute on The Office. Uh, big Seahawk fan, too, by the way, Ray and Wilson. Uh, Ray and Wilson also, uh, what is the name of his YouTube channel? He has a YouTube channel. Is it called Scatterbrain, Sinful Cheese, or Soul Pancake? What is the name of actor Rayan Wilson's YouTube channel? <laughs> oh, God. Golly. <laughs> uh, do, your, do your kids watch The Office by chance, uh, Moses? They don't, but you can ask them what they said if you like. <sighs> I will. I, 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 it's Mark's going one... with the kids. Oh. All right. Mark, Mark, this is your one time to use the kids, and they both said Soul Pancake. The options are scatterbrain, sinful cheese, or soul pancake. They both said soul pancake. I gotta go with those lovely kids, Moses. And you gotta go with the kids. Right. You know, Matt would say you should go with the kids because he has won many shows mm-hmm. doing that. Mm-hmm. And uh, guess what? They they got it right. It was soul pancake. Who knew? I was gonna say a better question might be: Do your kids watch YouTube? 
They have no idea who Rayan Wilson is, so that's not that nah. was pure guess. Yeah, they don't know. They don't have any idea. Okay, now we're down to Dustin. Dustin, this is going to take you back a few years. There was a, a soul singer. Remember the topics, Wilson. Yeah. There was a soul singer named Jackie Wilson. Very famous, yeah. Jackie. Yeah. Jackie was known by what nickname? Mister Hits, Mister Wonderful, or Mister Excitement? <laughs> Jackie Wilson was known by what nickname in the record business? Mister Hits. Mr. Wonderful or Mr. Excitement? I have no idea who that person is. Okay. I'll go, uh, Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful. He picked Mr. Wonderful. The kids picked Mr. Hits. I'm sorry. It is Mr. Excitement. He was Mr. Excitement. All right, that's the end of round one, and Will, Matt, and Mark all have a point. Dustin and I have a point, but that's okay because we still have another round and a two-point final question. So everyone is still very much eligible to win this game. Uh, we will go with, of course, our, our champ, Mark, uh, five, six, seven, or eight. You know what? I'll go five. Mark will go five. Uh, Matt, six, seven, or eight. Seven, please. Will, uh, six or eight. Six. And that will leave Dustin. I would like to go with eight, please. Dustin's going to choose eight. Well chosen, Dustin. <laughs> no, you have to take nine. Uh, nine. I'll well, go with nine. Well, you know, seven, eight, nine, but we won't get into that. Um, okay, the topic in this round is Wagner. We had Wilson, and now we have Wagner. So here we go. Mark. I'll, if you get this, I'll be more than a little surprised, but... Uh, in, 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 in 1980, how's that for confidence? Um, Mark, in 1984, singer Jack Wagner God. Reached, reached number two in the U.S. with what hit single? All I want, all I need, or all I am. <laughs> and and I want to add that this was my first girlfriend in 84, and, and it was supposedly our song, although I didn't know what Your what first the hell girlfriend was. was Jack Wagner? No. <laughs> That's what I was <laughs> No, this was our, our song, supposedly. I, was it, is it uh, All I Want, All I Need, or All I Am? Or All You So, you, so that was Jack Wagon Wagner back in 1984. Jack Wagon Wagner. He was actually on um, Soap. I want to know. I want to say General Hospital, but I'm not. Not, I'm not sold on that. I actually, you know what? I was, I was a teenager. I was already drinking that year, so there's a clue. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Through my pickled brain, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna sing it to you. All I need. Oh my God! It's <laughs> another musical moment. He says, "All I need." Lil Mo said, "All I need." Mosette said, "All I want." Yep. And now I'm not so sure just where I stand. There it is, Jack Wagner, folks. That's like All he's I need. in a bathtub. I can just oh, picture man, Moses can't... doing an awkward dance to this in Jesus. Oh, I know, right? And, and <laughs> yeah. this is our song. I'm like, I don't, whatever, I don't care. You know, my, my last here scene here sent... Wait, here comes your part, Ray. See, Mark, you sound just like that. No, I, that last oh, attempt was like the last attempt was like Peter Brady. A time to change. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, Peter Brady might be on here sometime. But the topic is Wagner, so we'll move on. Will. Here you go. Number six. Will, there was an actress named Lindsay Wagner. And in the 70s, she starred in the 70s TV show The Bionic Woman. My question to you is, what is the real name of the bionic woman? Is it Lindsay Summers, Jamie Summers, or Jamie Winters? Lindsay Summers, Jamie Summers, or Jamie Winters? And to help you, here's some Jack Wagner. No, I'm kidding. Like our organ. Lindsay Summers, Jamie Summers, Jamie Winters. The bionic okay. woman. Okay. Um... She had like... Um, I watched the show, believe it or not. She had, like, I think supersonic hearing. Yeah. That was her big thing, wasn't it? See, the I, Six I, Million I, Dollar Man had, like, the eyesight. I, I, I saw a Six I, Million Dollar Man. I didn't see Bionic Woman. This I is kind was... of a spinoff. It didn't go as well as the Six Million Dollar Man. But. Well, 
I'm gonna go with uh, Jamie. Jamie uh, Summers. What the He's hell? going with Jamie. What the hell? Jamie Summers. Um, Mosette said Lindsay Summers. Little Mo said Jamie Winters. You said Jamie Summers. You're right. Jamie Summers. Well, I just used up all my luck for the evening. <laughs> <laughs> you and Mark are tied at two. And uh, Matt and Dustin still have a question left. Matt, here is your question. Hmm. <laughs> Yours is a Wagner question, but it's a little different. Uh, uh, who, who, uh, starred, who starred in the 1983 film about the composer Wagner? Who is spelled Wagner, uh, but it's Wagner. Is it uh, Lawrence <laughs> Olivier, Alec Guinness? Or Richard Burton, who starred in the 83 film about the composer Wagner? Uh, oh, crumbs. You know, Flight of Valkyrie. Right. Da, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Lawrence oh. Olivier, Alec Guinness, or Richard Burton? No, no, it was Richard Burton. Okay, wow. You seem to think you know a lot about oh, films. What was it? Alec Guinness uh, was an answer. No, Alec Guinness was No, he was Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh, okay. No, no. Okay, no, yeah, but go he. On. Okay, but he can have more than one part. No. Um, Little Mo was, said Alec Guinness. Mosette said Richard Burton. You said Richard Burton. Yes, it's Richard Burton. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Mm-hmm. I like good questions tonight. These have been actually ones I know. I haven't had to guess. I know. Matt's, Matt's scaring me a little bit. Okay, Dustin. And uh, here's yours. And this is the one I wanted okay. Matt to This is what I wanted Matt to have, but you got it. Okay. Uh, I don't what, know what college you went to. Okay. What? What's... <laughs> What state is Wagner College in? Wagner College is in what state? Is it, is it in New York, Connecticut, or Maryland? I wanted Matt to have that one so bad. I would Wagner College, up. New York, Connecticut, or Maryland? Uh, ask the kids. Ask the kids. Go to friend. Oh, you want? I thought you said actually, it's the kids. Okay, ask the kids. No, I said ask the kids. <laughs> I shut up the bloody organ. All right. Uh, Mosette said New York. Little Mo said Connecticut. Uh, Mosette said New York. Little Mo said Connecticut. Neither one said Maryland. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in New York. I'll go New York. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in New York. So he's going to go with New York. And he's going to win with New York. Woof. Close. You should have given Matt that question, no matter what number. I know. Said. I should have. Yeah. You know. You know what's funny is <laughs> every time you guys pick the kids, they pick a right answer, but they don't. They don't do very well in these quizzes. But you guys seem to know when they do well. It's fascinating. Um, okay, we're going to our final answer. Will Matt and Mark at two? Dustin at one. So the order will go: Dustin, Will, Matt, and Mark. Dustin, Will, Matt, and Mark. And here is your final. Question for 12th Man Fan Jam video. Unless we tie. Now remember, we're looking for a number. Closest to number without going out over wins. If everyone goes over, the closest number that is over wins. Here's your final question, and we're going to start with Dustin. Dustin, how many total tackles does Bobby Wagner have in the NFL? How many total tackles does Bobby Wagner have in the NFL? I'll say... Two oh nine. Two oh nine. Next, we move to Will. Will, how many tackles does Bobby Wagner have in the NFL? Uh, three hundred and forty-six. Three forty-six. All right. Um, Matt, how many tackles? Mm. What did Dustin say? Two forty-one. Dustin said two oh nine. Will said three forty-six. Um. 347. Yeah. Oh, you, you are a mean person. Dick. And am. finally, <laughs> Mark. Mark. Speaking of me. <laughs> how many tackles does Bobby Wagner... I thought Wagner, Matt would say yes, please, but whatever. Mark, how many tackles does Bobby Wagner have in the NFL? Boy, let's see. Um, 209, yeah, 346, 347. Yeah, because, geez, this is... I mean... Oh, that's a great question because I could picture him having a ton in one year, you know, over a hundred in a year. So, you know, and I'm, oh. I'm going to do, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the, uh, I'm going to keep the cheap shot uh, trend going here and go three forty eight. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. I love him. Oh my God. Okay. 
209, 346, 347, 38. It'd be so funny if it was 344. But, um, <laughs> but the actual total of tackles that Bobby Wagner has in the NFL is 364, which means once again, well done, Mark. Yeah. Mark has won again. Mark, congratulations. Uh, well, that was a Texas <laughs> Leaguer kind of base hit in, in, in baseball, but I'll take it. I tell you what, man, two in a row for you. How's it feel to be a two-time winner? Uh, boy, it's the first time I've done anything two times, so it, uh, <laughs> it's, it's refreshing. <laughs> All right. Well, my goodness. What another bone-chilling, extra-thrilling, time-killing edition of your 12th Man Fan Jam Halftime Trivia Show. We hope you played along. Let us know how you did on the questions uh, by Twitter, on the Facebook page. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with the start of the third quarter right after this. You're listening to the 12th Man Fan Jam on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Well, I, I, I hear all that. What is an Internet? What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. And now, Deep Thoughts by Moses. Hi, everyone. It's your self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity here. And it's time for another top three. Three is a magic number. Yes, it is. Yes, the top three for this episode comes directly from our office located in the BMAC. It's the top three highlights at Seahawk Training Camp. Number three, Richard Sherman's Chunky Soup Day at the Mess Hall. Number two, Russell Wilson leading a chorus round of Kumbaya in the offensive huddle. And the number one highlight at Seahawks Training Camp this year, sitting around the campfire at night and hearing Coach Carroll tell scary stories about Super Bowl play calling. This has been your self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity, and this has been another Top 3. Welcome back to the 12th Man Fan Jam Show and the start of the third quarter. As you can hear, the church bells are ringing, which means it's once again time to enter the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. And once again, time for another sermon and our traditional pre-season blessing from the self-appointed Reverend Moses. Take it away, Moses. Yes, it is I, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. How is everyone here on the 12th Man Fan Jam Show? Good, thanks, Reverend. Good, sir. Oh. Oh, so it is such a wonderful, wonderful crowd here this evening. Matt, it's so good to see you still living across the big pond, I see. Yes, Reverend, still here. Well, it, it, no offense, my friend, but I don't, I don't care for foreigners very much. I don't. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, but y'all talk funny, and it, it's distracting to me when I'm trying to hear you, but we'll work on your accent later. Mark! Mark, living in the devil's armpit, that is 49ers land. I pray for you, my friend. Yeah, worse yet is Caitlyn Jenner my new next-door neighbor. So thank you, Moses. <laughs> well, be careful when you go out to get your uh, – to get to get your paper because you never know what's going to happen there. Well, you know, we do our best work in the den of the devil and in the bowels of the beast. And I thank you for that, my friend. Thank you for doing that for all Seahawk fans. My pleasure. Um, Will, uh, Will, Will, Will. There he is with his crazy Catman starter set, bag of Cheetos and a remote with all the pay-per-view porn he can afford this month. I don't think, don't think we don't know that, Will. Seriously, I, I pray for you, my friend. <laughs> but no, seriously, have you seen Will lately? He's lost about half a me bane. It's amazing. The man looks phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Will, you look wonderful, and I'm so happy for you. Why, well, thank you. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll check your arms for tracks later, but I digress. Dustin! Sweet, sure. innocent little Dustin. I, I am glad to see the pills are working and you can join the show again. Praise praise Alan for that. 
I'm glad to be out of rehab. I like being on work release. So thank I'm you. glad you, we've missed you so much, my friend. But you know, we understand working nights to support the family, and times are hard for a pimp. And we understand that, but we digress. <laughs> it's hard out here for a pimp. It is hard out for a pimp. I, oh, oh, my friends, the preseason is upon us now. If I may, I'd like to get a little church up and here. Friends, it is so good to be back to share in you all the glorious power of Seahawk positivity. And this week I am joined by my church organist, the one, the only, Miss Cleolanda Hawk. Cleolanda, honey, kick it old school for us, if you would. Oh, there she goes. Filled with the spirit and probably some other substances I cannot relate to you for fear of prosecution. She is something, isn't she? She can... She can tinker the twines. Okay, baby, take a take a break, Cleolanda. Stay away from the sacrificial wine, though, baby. We have have some for Sunday. It's getting crowded. It's football season again. Oh, Cleolanda Hawk, she is something. She she did want me to pass out to all of uh, the people listening that her and her band, uh, Junior Pistol and the Pistol Whips, will be performing this coming week at the Slaughtered Wiener Bar and Grill, which is just outside <laughs> on the north side of town. Uh, I know Matt's been to the Slaughtered Wiener Bar and Grill many times. <laughs> That's like a Jewish bar, right? <laughs> it is. It, it definitely is. You you get you get all your drinks half off. So um, there's the drummer. He's 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 here. Um, it, it's interesting. The band is a hodgepodge of musical taste from uh, NWA to the Clash to Willie Nelson. You don't know what you're going to get. So come on out. But uh, do attend at your own risk because halfway through the band's first set, Cleolanda usually has been drinking at that point, and she starts disrobing, and by the end of the second set, she's usually down to just an article to a clothing. So be careful if you go, and you might want to take some blinders. And uh, Cleolanda wanted me to share this as well. Uh, she is the president of the Women's Auxiliary, and uh, this Sunday they are running a kissing booth again outside the church to raise money. The uh, proceeds will go to help get Cam back into camp, and Cleolan is willing to do all she can for Cam. God bless him. Uh, someone should really warn that man, but she can't leave the state, so hopefully that'll keep her from doing something that Cam may regret. But I, I, I should warn you that the last time the women's auxiliary booth had a kissing booth outside of church, Cleolan kind of went a little bit overboard, as she usually does. She never should have gone in the booth after all those bottles of scotch, but... Let's just say some young men went into the kissing booth of young men and came out an experienced man of the world, and I, I think you can follow me. I'm, I'll draw a map for Will later. Uh, friends, <laughs> as we gather together on this show, we must give all great praise and thanks to the one power that leads us and shines our way to the promised land. And that power, of course, is Seahawk Positivity. Yes, these are great and wondrous times to be alive, my brethren. And as we continue to bask in the warm glow of Seahawk positivity and prepare for another amazing season from this amazing team assembled for us by Carol and Schneider. And what a team they have assembled for us. A bone-crushing defense, accurate special teams, and, and an offense that has more good drives than Alden Smith. <laughs> 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 That's probably I'm, a legit fact. I may be going to hell, but I'm smiling, and I know, I I know I'm not alone. They uh, offense that has more catches has catch has caught more than sailors on leave in Manila. It's true, they're they're very accurate. And new faces that Jimmy Graham, unbelievable. He he grabs the ball out of the air like it's the last waffle at the orphanage. You know what I'm saying? That might be too soon. That might have hit home. <laughs> I apologize in advance to Jimmy and, and, and anyone who's a fan of his. Um, and there's that new defensive lineman. His, his name's Adabudu Adawada. I don't, that big fat guy from Cleveland. You know what I'm talking about. Not Drew Carey, the other fat guy from Cleveland. The guy that's on our team. I don't think. Anyway, he's just amazing. Just amazing defensive lineman. And of course, Chris Richard is their new defensive coordinator. And, he was a Seahawk himself back in the day, if you remember. I believe number 42, a defensive back. Uh, in fact, I think there's the toaster at camp is still named after him. I'm, I'm kidding. I'll let you think about that one a little bit. Uh, but as we enter the preseason, we must remember many things, my brethren. Things like scores mean nothing. Seriously, why bother even awarding points? It's just a reason for gambling addicts to lose more money. And you know, as public service, if you are betting on preseason games, then you might have a little bit of a gambling problem. Just 
I'm just saying, I channeled my inner Jeff Foxworthy there. But uh, as we gather to bless this team in the preseason, I need you all to do me a favor. Put your hands in the air and feel the power of Seahawk positivity. Are your hands up? Get them up. Yeah. Dustin, Dustin, your hands are in the air in the evening. It's like old times, isn't it? Hands up in the evening. I know what you're talking about. Let's put our hands in the air and feel the massive power coming in from within us. If you feel that massive power of Seahawk positivity, Dustin, that's here and I'm in nice and loud. I'm in. Yes, yes. Let's send a wave of Seahawk positivity across this land, across this world. For our defense, who shall continue to smack other teams in the face like they took their lunch money. How about Will? Will, let me hear it. I'm in nice and loud. I'm in. And for the offense who will roll over opposing defenses like Bill Cosby at a pharmaceutical convention. Too soon, I don't know. Let's hear it. I'm in nice and loud from Mark. I'm in all up in here. Yes, yes. And those special teams. They are so special, are they not? May their kicks be accurate, their tackles be true, and the return team not resemble Brian Walters in any way. Will, I want it. I'm in nice and loud. I'm in. Oh, I feel the power that is Seahawk positivity flowing through all of us. And may the plays be executed. May the players be rested. And may the medical staff be bored during this entire Paris season. Dustin, if you believe in that, let's hear it. I'm in nice and loud. I'm in. Yes, it is a mighty power. And if we lift our hearts, our minds, our voices to the one true power, the lead into the promised land, we know that we will indeed savor those upcoming preseasons with the power of Seahawk positivity. Clear line to put down that bottle and play us out, darling. That's right. Go forth, my brethren. Go forth and spread the power, the good word of Seahawk positivity. This has been your self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk positivity. Praise Largent, praise Cortez, praise Walter Jones, and go Hawks! And now, it's time for the fourth quarter of the 12th Man Fan Jam. Here to lead us through the final quarter is once again our host, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, Magic Voice. This is your self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity. Welcome back to the fourth and final quarter of episode 308, the preseason 2015 edition of your 12th Man Fan Jam show. Remember, uh, join our Facebook page. We're going to put the caption, that picture from the end of the second quarter up on our page uh, with our captions, and then uh, we'll have you... uh, Maybe make captions yourself. Looks like our next show is going to be, uh, we're going to take a little bit break. Preseason is going to happen. And it looks like we're, we're shooting for that first weekend in September for our next show. So it's going to be a couple weeks off. So you want to keep track of what's going on on our Facebook page, 12th Man Fan Jam Show. And, of course, email 12th Man Fan Jam at gmail.com and Twitter at Seahawk Positivity. You can keep in touch with us until the next show. Uh, we're going to close tonight talking about training camp. And um, a lot of us are from, like you said, we're Seahawks fans around the world. Um, you know, a lot of us are far away. And uh, uh, unfortunately, only one person here has gone to training camp, and that is that is Will. And so I asked Will if he would take the fourth quarter and just kind of talk about his experience at training camp and what it was like. So, Will, you can kind of take it away. What was your uh, day at training camp like? Well, it was especially fun for me because I went last Sunday – uh, which happened to be my mother's birthday, and uh, Dad was actually off helping uh, his brother move, so Mom was home by herself, so I thought, well, hey, why don't you come to camp with me? So she had awesome. never uh, gotten to go to training camp or really do much uh, Seahawk stuff at all, so this was her first time. And, you know, it was a great day for it. It wasn't wasn't too hot, uh, but it was still nice, and uh, a bunch of the crew were there, uh, uh, Kilt Man, uh, Cannonball, uh, a few others, so had a pretty good crowd. I tell you one thing about this team this year is just they just look so fast. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Robert Turbin, you know, he had uh, both his hips operated on this off season, and he is just he is just blazing down that field. Wow. Um, Tyler Lockett, um, we're gonna have fun watching this kid Nick, this year, not just mm-hmm. in the return game, but. As a receiver, that's going to be that's going to be huge. And then, mm-hmm. 
you know, all the radio shows, all the articles, all the beat writers, everybody's talking about Jimmy Graham, and mm -hmm. it's well deserved. Mm -hmm. you, the, the, it's it's like watching a high schooler playing with uh, middle schoolers <laughs> at times. I mean, the wow. guy is just head and, head and shoulders uh, above, you know, our, our backup safeties anyway. But he, he is really going to be a big difference for us. It is really going to be exciting to see him play, and it's just great to have Wilson signed and Wagner signed. And actually it was the first practice after Wagner signed. So of course the crowd was giving him some love and he was giving us some thumbs up and it was fun. Um, I still stand by my prediction that uh, Thomas Rawls is going to beat out Kristen Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, he was working with the kick returners for a while and dropped a couple. Russell Wilson had a nifty play in team drills where he evaded the rush and dumped it off to, Michael in the flat could have been a, gone for a huge gain. Michael dropped the ball. You know, it's just so much athletic ability, but just hasn't quite seemed to put it all together. I don't know if he's going to do it in time. But, you know, other than that, you know, it was great. It was a good experience. Mom had fun, had a good birthday, and I'm just really feeling good about this team this year, guys. Something, something good's happening. I think we've got better depth than we have last year. I think we have more talent than we had last year, and Anybody expecting, you know, Maurice Jones-Drews on NFL Network saying Seattle has peaked. Uh, don't bet on it, MJD. <laughs> he wishes they peaked. Um, I, I, I found a video of uh, Jimmy Graham completely covered by Sean Sheed. And just, I mean, she did a great job. He was covered. He even broke to the ball right. Didn't matter. Graham, 12-yard catch on the corner. And just, you know, just ridiculous. Just absolutely ridiculous. And I showed it to a couple of uh, teachers that I work with here who are obviously Colt fans, and they were like, that's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. And they're like football coaches, and they're looking at the, you know, it's not, nothing that she did. He was completely covered. He did it right. He's, that's just insane. He said, you guys are going to be unstoppable this year. And I'm like, well, you know, a possibility. Um, Matt, what have you taken from what you've seen and read about, about the camp so far? Um, what I've taken is speed. Everything seems to be talking about how fast everything is moving, how fast everyone is going. Um, and I quite like the sounds of that. That sounds like it's it's the direction we want to go in. Question for Will, though. What do you think about the corners? Because there were some questions raised, I know, about um, you know our corner depths and these sorts of things, what with Lane and Simon and you know on not being able to perform. So what did you think of the, of the newbies? <clears throat> um kind of hard to tell um i noticed uh carrie williams has been getting a lot of um a lot of work with uh richard and a lot of work on the side so i think they're trying to coach up his fundamentals a bit sherman um sherman actually got beat for a pass by uh a catch by douglas mcneil who's actually now working with the cornerbacks after uh having a few good days at receiver um but you know sherman's gonna be fine and um uh, I thought uh, Blackman worked fi looked fine. I think he's going to be solid for us, and you know it's 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 going to be a change from uh, it's 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 definitely going to be a change from uh, Maxwell, but yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think we'll at least be solid. Good, and they are as fast because I mean it's very difficult, obviously being thousands of miles away. We do get to watch it live, so I can see training camp live on uh, the Seahawks um, channel, um, and they everything looks fast. <laughs> That's what I kept thinking was, wow, all of these people are flying um, about. So, yeah, for me, speed seems to be our new our new weapon of choice, Dennis. Awesome. Yeah, speed kills. Absolutely. Mark, uh, comments, questions about training camp? What have you noticed? Well, of course, you know, first off, you know, getting these guys, uh, getting Wilson and and, uh, and Wagner signed just uh, puts the whole team at ease, uh, except for Bennett and Cam. Not kidding. Um <laughs> you, you know, no, it's really, but not really. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know what, actually the thing I, I didn't read the, uh, the article, but I heard uh, they were talking about it down here on the radio about, uh, Carol, I guess is in sports illustrated the current issue. And, and, you know, they were talking about, you know, he, he commented yeah. about moving on from the super bowl and usually, you know, the, that could be dismissed as this kind of lip service. And of course that's what he's going to say, but, but with Pete's approach and, 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 and with, you know, his coaching style and his leadership, I think that the among the biggest assets we have is that we do have a head coach that can get these guys to believe, move forward, forget about what happened at the end of the Super Bowl. And, you know, we're right in the middle 
or wherever in our in, in our window to win another uh, a Lombardi. And I think I think Pete's is such a great coach to just emphasize the positive things about this season. Forget about last year. And and I think this team, you know, collectively can move on from the disappointment, and they're mentally tough enough to win another title. Yeah, I I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, um, Will, any final thoughts on your uh, on your trip with your mom? Mom had a good time, and everything went well. Yeah, she had a she had a blast, and um, I th- I think that's the fun part about uh, doing the training camp practices. Is you get people who maybe can't get to the games or can't afford the games. They have a chance to do this and uh, still get a chance to see the players. Maybe get an autograph or two and do fun stuff like that. So that's um, that's why why I'm glad they do. That's why I'm glad they do have the open practices during training camp. I think that's yes. a, a really cool thing. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I think it's fantastic, and I think, uh, I think everyone, I, th- I think it's just I, we're all excited about this team. I think we're expecting this team to even go better and be more than what they were last year, which is a- amazing to say. But I, I think it, it's it's entirely possible that we may just have a team that's actually better than what we've had the last two years, and they've been pretty unbeatable. So um, while we're we're chomping at the bit to get the preseason, we know you are too. Um, so let's. Uh, Let's put the end another bone chilling, extra thrilling, uh, wonderful and amazing award winning 12th man fan jam to a, a, a close. We're, we're so glad you decided to waste some time with us. It was, as usual, a show that raised the bar here at the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. We certainly hope you laughed a little and maybe just maybe you learned a little something along the way. What do we learn in this episode? Well, we learned that Mark can sing a mean Michael Jackson and a mean Jack Wagner. We learned that Will's cat is a diva. Uh, Will can sing a very mean Veruca Salt. And finally, we uh, we learned that we love Twitter, and we learned that Rex Ryan loves dog biscuits, so they must taste like feet. So, on behalf of my partner in crime from Mary Old England, Matt, Statsman Mark, our news hound, Shadowhawk Will, and, of course, Dustin as the beaver, this is your self-appointed Reverend <laughs> Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity saying enjoy the preseason and go Hawks go Hawks yeah